church that's how we started this morning what is it is it that big of a deal is it that important what's it supposed to look like uh, do we get a choice in the matter the world today and I'm not just saying the world is in uh, the the uh, those unsafe but even in the Christian realm have their idea of what church is and what church should be and so who gets the final say we talked about this this morning who's it up to is it up to each of us individually is it up to each church and what's it supposed to look like we saw this morning we must understand who is the author of the institution who's the founder of it who set the rules uh, in scripture God ordained three institutions we saw the home and we see the government and then we saw that God instituted the church and so if we want to understand how to run how to organize uh, what it should look like uh, what rules we should follow uh, what task we should have at hand then we need to see what the author of the institution says that that's true for all three of those did we catch the first one? The home. Mm -hmm. On our homes, what should our homes look like? See what God said about it. He instituted it. Our government, how should we run it? Well, let's see what God instituted. Remember we saw this morning the first primary purpose of the government is to protect its citizens and to protect life. Uh, we're a little far away from that in this country perhaps. And then in regards to church, we must see what God says about it. So on Sunday mornings, we're looking more at the skeleton, the structure. Uh, on Sunday evenings, we're going to change. So the, this morning, we saw why. Why is it important? Next week, Lord willing, we'll look at what it is in the first place. And then uh, the week after that, I love my church Sunday, we're going to look at why do we need it. Very important, and I encourage you to, to be present for all those. On Sunday nights, we'll look at tonight, we'll look at what is our place in it. What's my place in the church? Uh, we'll look at how do I fit in? What should I do? Am I needed? We'll look at those over the next few weeks. Matthew 16, 18, you don't need to turn there. Uh, it's a verse we spent a long time in this morning. It says that Jesus speaking, he said, I will build my church. We've got to do it his way. This morning, again, we looked at why. What's the big deal anyway? Does it really matter? We saw this morning that the church is precious. Why is the church precious? Because Christ called out the church. Christ purchased the church. We saw Christ commissioned the church. And last of all, Christ must have preeminence in the church. I'll be honest with you. I was a little uh, hesitant at times to be as direct or straightforward. Some of the things you said this morning. And uh, not usually like that. However, where the Bible is direct, I can be direct. It's not my fault, not my word. And so, in regards to church, some of the things I wrote down and mentioned uh, of questions we have about the church and, and how it makes us feel and how long was this service and, and what, did, what do I like this style and how do I prefer this? You know why I wrote those down? Because I've asked those questions myself. <laughs> I needed it too. The truth of the matter is when we do that, what we're showing is that we want it to be about us. We saw Christ must have the preeminence. Yeah. And we finished with the idea that sometimes you'll hear people say, Pastor, I can, I can worship God on my own. I don't need the local church. And for that, we understand that when that's our attitude, we are completely disregarding God's love for his church. Yeah. God's emphasis on the church but when we love and commit to it we're showing our love and commitment to that which is precious to christ so we saw this morning the church is precious and i want to be a part of that this evening let's go to ephesians chapter 4 go on a completely different route this evening ephesians chapter number four in your bibles for the majority of the time this evening it will be a little bit of a bible study if you're with us on Thursday nights, we kind of go verse by verse through different sections. And, and we covered uh, about 25 verses in Acts this past Thursday night, uh, looking uh, towards the church of Philippi. We're going to go through about five or six verses this evening in Ephesians 4. And then I'll give you a brief outline at the end and we'll be finished. Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to begin in verse number 11. 
Ephesians 4, 11, the Bible says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And let's bow for prayer. Lord, help us now as we study your word. These verses, it's so important that we grasp this. We understand the importance of your church as we looked at this morning and then the importance of our part in it. The truth of the matter is it doesn't work right if we don't fulfill our part. Help us. Teach us. Guide us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage begins by speaking of the leadership roles in the church. We're going to see next week, Lord willing, spiritual gifts. I'm considering even uh, taking a few moments. We might even pass out a spiritual gift test. We'll see. Uh, going forward and then take, using it almost as a classroom setting. We'll see. But it doesn't list all spiritual gifts here in regards to the church in this passage. But it does list the leadership roles. It says in verse 11, he gave some apostles and some prophets. Now, the apostles and the prophets played a temporary role in the leadership of the church. Uh, the apostles were ones that were witnesses to the resurrected Savior. We don't have any more apostles. Okay? The prophets were the ones who gave the word of God. God spoke directly to them, and they gave the word of God. We don't have any more prophets anymore. Okay, uh, Just so you know. If someone says, I heard a direct revelation from God for me to tell you, that, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, we've got God's complete revelation here. We don't need any more. So prophets are no longer there. Prophets are no longer there. Is, can anybody hear a ring in here? Is it just me? A couple in here? A little bit? No, 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 not that, from the sound system. A little bit? Well, let me, anytime you change anything... <laughs> Take a few views out for the sound changes. Anyway, here we go. Just so we got apostles, we got prophets, and then it says evangelists, and then pastors and teachers. We still have uh, evangelists, pastors and teachers. They still continue today. And this text we're going to look at in this passage tells us why. Why do we have pastors and teachers today? Why do we have evangelists today? What's their purpose? Verse number 12 tells us the purpose. Now, in, and, and I don't want to confuse you, I don't want to spend a long time in this, we could, we could really dive deep into it, but the word for, the small word for, preposition for, is three times in this, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It actually has two different meanings. The first for is something different from the second, second two for, uh, two for, how about that? Uh, but there's one general purpose. Let me just bypass all of that and say the purpose of the leadership is the beginning. Why do we have pastors and teachers, evangelists, verse 12? For the perfecting of the saints. The purpose of spiritual leadership in a church is for the perfecting of the saints. That word perfecting doesn't mean to make you perfect and sinless. If that was my job, to help make you perfect... <laughs> I'd be a failure, right? Right? I, I can't be perfect. None of us can be perfect. But the word perfecting simply means maturing, growing, more complete, perfecting. Now, all of this, all of this leadership, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, all of it centers around, I should have said this earlier, it centers around the word of God. The apostles are ones who saw the re uh, resurrected Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word. So they saw the Word. The prophets were the ones who God gave His Word to. 
evangelists are supposed to are ones that, that, that give out the, the, the word and more, more specifically the gospel. Pastors and teachers must center all of their working around the word of God. So the word perfecting means growing, maturing, completing, and it centers around the word of God. So, Pastor, what are you saying? Jesus has given the church spiritual leaders, here it is, to help perfect us in him through God's word. You know what my main job is as a pastor? Is to help the church body be perfect. And again, complete, mature in God's word. It, it would do no good for me to get up here and teach you how to go through life based on my experiences. It would be no good for me to get up and, and give you some sound bites and some thoughts and some things that will tickle your ears and make you feel all fuzzy and warm inside. My ideas. I need to center what I teach on God's word. Why? So that you can be complete, mature, perfect in him through the word of God. My job to help you be complete in Christ by giving you a steady diet of God's word. Can I ask you a favor? Ask you to do me a favor. When I begin to get away from this, tell me. <laughs> get someone else to be your pastor. Uh, 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 maybe give me a, maybe give me another chance, but it, it, hit me over the head. You big dummy. You're not here to tell us what you think. You're here to tell us what God says. That's my job. That, that, it's for the perfecting of the saints. You're not going to be uh, perfected with my ideas or my thoughts or my little things that, 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 again, just make you all warm and fuzzy. No, no, no. I've got to give you God's word. What does this lead to? It leads to the rest of this verse. For the perfecting of the saints, what, does, what, what happens then? It says for the work of the ministry. When we're perfected, when we're being more mature and completing God's word, it leads to the work of the ministry. As we read this passage and as we study this text, it's very, very clear that the work of the ministry, watch this, is not just the church leader's job. I've been in, in many churches. I've been part of many churches. I've been on, on staff on a couple of different churches. And, and there are some who believe uh, that's why we have a pastor. That's why the pastor has staff to get the church work done. It's dangerous. You've got to be careful. The, the scripture here is clear. The leaders are supposed to help the church do the work of the ministry. You've heard many hands make light work, right? And that's certainly true as well in regards to the work of the church. It's not the pastor's job to do the work of the entire church. Think about this. If I were to, and, and, and you all do so well with this, that's why I don't mind saying it because it's not true here. But if I were to, if I were to do everything as we go forward in this church and, and do my best to do the maintenance and, and, and the guard work and the counting and the, the paying the bills and, and this and, and then and studying and the visiting and, the, and, and just do it all. You know what our church would do? Individually, we wouldn't grow. As a body, there's no way we'd grow. We're trying to do everything. You're not growing because you're not being perfected in work of the ministry. I'm not growing because I'm I'm just worn out going every every way to do each direction, and it doesn't help anything. So we need we need someone to get the work done. We just need to hire some more staff. No, 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 no. God has a plan for His church. Again, we're going to go with what the author of the institution says about it. It's the leader's job to equip the church members to do the work. That doesn't mean that the leader is exempt. I'm just going to tell you all to do the work. I ain't going to do any of it. That's not what that means at all. But it does explain the leader's primary focus. It is my job. I will answer to God for this church. You know that? You won't answer to God for the way this church direction went. 
But God says in Scripture that I'll give an account for his church. And so if I'm going to give an account, I better do his way. And God says, your way, as you lead, help them grow in me for them to continue work. And we're going to look at more of this, this as we go forward. The second action in this verse, the work of the ministry, and then it says this. Look at verse 12, the end, the last phrase, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The edifying of the body of Christ. What does that mean? The word edify can mean build up. Uh, two different meanings the word edify has. It means to build up, but it also is not just the process of building. It could also mean the result, the building itself, the frame. And in this passage, it means the second. It means the completed Mature construction, the building. Why did God give us leaders for the perfecting of the saints? What's the purpose of the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ? The body of Christ, the church, must be built up in him. Spiritually strong, firm, mature before God. How are these things possible? How is it possible for the perfecting of the saints, all of us, to grow closer to him, more like him? How is it possible for the body of Christ to be edified, to be built up? The only way that's possible is from God's word. Mm -hmm. Is the spiritual diet. Then the role of the spiritual church leader is to aid the church in growing to a complete and mature body before God. A strong, constructed building of God. We read a passage in chapter 5 this morning. Why don't you look over at it? It caught my attention as I was studying this for this evening. In chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 25, and we spent a while on this, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Notice 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Why? Verse 27, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. God says, this is what I want for my church. I want you to grow up in me. I want you to be sanctified and, and washed. I want you to not have spot or wrinkle of a glorious church, holy, without blemish. And he said, I want to do that by the washing of water by the word. This must be primary in all of our lives. This must be primary in this church. God says, this is the way. Verse 11 and 12, we'll go quickly through the rest of these verses. Verse 13 tells us the goal. So we've got the leaders to train the people to do the work, to have a glorious church. When do we reach that? What, what, what are we shooting for? Verse 13 of chapter 4. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. We're going to keep going in just a moment. The unity of the faith. He says we're going to, we need to be one. Oh, it's a dangerous time when a church has uh, bickering within one person is against another, and one person doesn't like the way the other person did this, or this person got this to say about the pastor, and this person got this to say about the usher, and this is then. Woo, careful. The goal is that we all come in the unity, but not just unity, unity of the faith. That is the doctrine. We spent uh, the first three months on Sunday mornings back last summer talking about for the faith. Uh, we, we can be together as long as we're all doctrinally sound. I can't, we can't have unity if I'm preaching salvation by grace and you're believing I've got to work my way to heaven. There's no unity. Unity of the faith and then second of all, verse 13, and of the knowledge of the Son of God. We've got to know Jesus. It says we got to continue with this. We'll be built up in him doing the work of the ministry until we're all unified in one doctrine and we all know Jesus. Not just academically, know things about him. Watch this. Know him personally. 
That's what we're supposed to be as a church. Continue in verse 13. Unto a, here's the word again, perfect man. Again, that's not a sinless one. Watch this. Our goal should be to become complete, mature, perfected in Christ. Is anybody there yet? Okay, so we've all got a ways to go, myself included. That's our goal in church. And then the last of the, the verse, here's the measure. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's not enough to, I've been in church for a while, I know quite a bit, I, I probably know more than anyone else here in this church. Yeah. It's wonderful, but hold on, what's our measure? The stature of the fullness of Christ. Now how are we measuring up, alright? We've got a ways to go. But that's the purpose of the church, to grow up in Him. How exciting. Verse 14 tells us why. <laughs> that we henceforth be no more children... So what we've talked about being a complete, that means we're growing up, growing up in him. We're not children anymore. Tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. What's it saying? Some new fad comes in and, and we leave and go chase after that. That sounds good. But if we're a complete Christian, if we're a church that's being edified, we're going to recognize that's not right. That's not Bible. We're not going to be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. <laughs> and then it can get tricky. It says, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Mm -hmm. There are people, there are preachers even, that are, that, that are just looking for ways to knock off this person and this one. And the devil is looking. And, and, and what he, there's nothing more that he is afraid of than a church. That's moving forward for God. Why? Remember this morning we saw? Jesus said, I will build my church. And what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. He knows he can't win against the church. So what's he going to do? Try to get us out. Why do we need leaders for perfecting the saints? For the work of the ministry. Edifying of the body of Christ. What's the goal? To we all come in the unity of faith. Why? So we don't get tossed to and fro. Verse 15 tells us what? But speaking the truth in love. <laughs> truth and love are often uh, paired together in Scripture. It's very important. Watch this. We're not careful. We'll, we'll hear something like, we just need to love everybody. We just need to be loving. That, that's a good thing. We need love. Absolutely. By this shall all men know my, if you're my disciples, if you have love one for another. True. But hold on. We must speak the truth in love. We need them both. I can't love you without telling you the truth. If I'm a pastor and we have a, a room filled of uh, people who don't know for sure heaven is their home. And, and, and haven't and don't know Jesus as their Savior. And I were to get up here and just talk and talk. And, oh, you're going to make it. Everything's going to be okay. We need to have a, a, a good spirit within. And everybody just think positive thoughts towards each other. We'll all be good. See you later. Hold on. I didn't get truth. Speaking the truth in love. This is not just the pastor's job. This is all of our job. Yeah. To do it in love. Hold on. Keep going. May grow up. Into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Notice it says we're growing up how? Into him. Into Christ. We're supposed to be growing up into him, not in and of ourselves, not become a better person in and of, uh, on the side. Okay, no, I'm growing up into him. And then it reminds us which is the head, even Christ. The church. Is the body of Christ. But he is the head. We looked at this this morning. My body. Can't just do whatever it's going to do. It has to wait to receive instruction from my head. If I want to lift up my leg right now. That was my head telling me to lift up my leg right now. It wasn't my leg just doing its own thing. Our body doesn't work independently from our head. Hold on. Our church must be the same way. We must grow up in the head. He's the head. He tells us what to do and we do what he says. But hold on. You, sometimes uh, at the infant stage, this is a little different. But 
you grow in proportion with your head. Sometimes when you're kids, you got a big old head, right? And the kid, I've seen kids just like they can't, they can't uh, uh, balance because their head's just wobbling. But you grow up into it, right? You can't have my left arm is not going to grow so much more. It can't. It's not going to be disproportionate in that regard. Now, yes, I understand there are some uh, uh, bone uh, diseases and muscle things that, that, that but, but for the most part, our body's going to go proportionate to our head. You know what? We can grow up into Him in all things. Not just having one part of our church that does this. I don't know. How about all coming to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You see the depth of this? We're not, we're only scratching the surface. This entire context is not individual. The context of this passage is the church as a whole, as a group. But I'd be remiss with saying the group is comprised of individuals. The group won't do it if individuals don't. And then verse 16 tells us what the result will be. From whom, I want you to notice, the whole body, that's the church, mm -hmm. fitly joined together, mm -hmm. compacted by that which, here's a word, every joint supplieth. What's it saying? We're all working together according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. What's that? Every person doing his part, every part being very important, what happens? Make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. God says this, do it my way, and I'll give the increase. Every person is important. Every person needs to do the task and the job so the church moves forward. Here's the message this evening. That was all Bible study, the introduction, and I'll give you a, a brief outline and we'll be finished. Here's the message. Join in the work. Let's join in the work. What is the work of the church? We talked about this part this morning. What's the mission statement? What's the task? of the church. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. You can go there if you like, but uh, we've looked at it many times. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. And though I'm with you all waiting to end the world. The church was given the important task and commission by Christ to reach the world. Pastor, how's that possible? Each person doing their part. We saw this morning in Scripture, and especially in the New Testament, when, when the church was persecuted, we're going to stop it. Preach no more in that name. We're going to persecute them. And they begin to scatter. But all that did was make another church here, make another church here, and another church here. And we're going to get them to go under. And all that does was make it go more. That's the task of every Christian. So how can I, how can you, how can we join in the work? Let's be busy, first of all, spreading the gospel. Yeah. Okay, let's make it practical. Pastor, well, what does that mean? I, I'm not going to preach. Pass out a gospel track this week. we got a stack of them for you. Talk about Jesus with your friends this week, with your coworkers. How about this? Try bringing the lost to church with you. You say, what's the big deal, Pastor? Well, no, we, we need to do our part. Let's, watch this, join in the work. We've seen what happens when we do it God's way. Let's all join in the work. We're going to look at next week spiritual gifts. And, and, and just briefly, I do want to give you a little teaser with that. At the moment of salvation... The Holy Spirit gifted every Christian with something. Every Christian. You say, I don't know what it is. We'll, we'll actually try to help you find it next week if you're, if you're not sure. But hold on. Some people will say, given the gospel, that's just not my spiritual gift, Pastor. The gospel is not a spiritual gift. The gospel is a command given to every Christian. 
and specifically given to the church. Let's be busy spreading the gospel. I was sharing this week with someone as we go going through discipleship. Uh, we've got quite a few that, that are going through it right now. And again, if you'd like to, let, let me know. we got another, another new one starting on Tuesday. Re reproducing new Christians. You know what? Watch this. You know what our job is? Not just me as a pastor, but all of us as Christians. To reach one with the gospel. To train them individually to grow up in Christ so that they can go and reach someone. And then they train them and then they go and reach someone. You know, if all this church did was people that pastor reached, that's adding to the church. But you know what's better than adding? Multiplying. Mm -hmm. You get a lot more, a lot faster. How do you multiply? One trains one, who trains one, who trains one, who trains And now there's branching off so many different ways. God says, that's how I'll build my church. How can we join in the work of the gospel. How can we join in the work of the church? Be busy spreading the gospel. Second of all, let's take the responsibility of here it is encouraging one another. Join in the work. What can I do? Spread the gospel. What else? Encourage one another. Notice Ephesians 4, looking back in verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And there are other verses that we, we could look through and, and we won't take the time to right now. But speaking the truth in love also has the idea of encouraging fellow believers. Can I encourage you to encourage someone else? Can I encourage you when you come into church, do your best not to come, sit, listen, and leave? But look around. I know it's easier for some, and, and some do have a spiritual gift of encouragement and mercy. But try to encourage someone. If you didn't see someone today, send them a text. Give them a call. Let's encourage them. Hey, I saw you're going through something. And I just wanted you to know I'm praying for you. Here we go. How else can we encourage someone? Pray for them. Pray specifically for someone. Pray continually for someone and tell them you are. Why, Pastor, what's the big deal? Let's join in the work. Let's encourage the believers. How about this? Bear one another's burdens. You see someone that has a need? Watch this. See someone that has a need? We're being real practical. See someone that has a need and you can meet it? Meet it. That's deep. Wow. No. You see You see something I can, you know, they're struggling with this one. The Lord's giving me that. I want to do that. What are we doing? We're encouraging one another. Why? We're joining in the work. Why do we want to join in the work? Because we get to be a part of perhaps the most wonderful organization outside of the home. That's the church. Yeah. Uh, an organization that God ordained. An organization that is more than an organization. It's an organism. It's a living, living breathing body of Christ. There's nothing like the church. Let's join in the work. Be busy spreading the gospel. Second of all, encourage one another. How about this? Third of all, how can we join in the work? Let's be busy serving the Lord. Simple. We're going to really get practical now. We're going to really get into just specifics for this church. There's work to be done. So many of you are so helpful and faithful in working. But here's some things that perhaps... More of us could join in on. Uh, first and foremost, praying. Pray for this church. All of us should have a part in that. How about cleaning? <laughs> cleaning the grounds and the buildings after church. Well, this person does this. How about we join them? How about uh, maybe getting here a little early and straightening up before? You know, at times, the building's clean on Thursday nights after church and by Sunday morning somehow it's not clean anymore. I mean, amazing how that works. Maybe get here before and straightening before church. How about this? We have specifically our, our, our kitchen area and we're doing our best to have breakfast each Sunday morning. How about Pastor? I'll take that. Breakfast duty. Uh, not, not meaning I'll do breakfast all the time, but I'll make sure it's done. Uh, we're stocked up on items or food or whatever the case may be. There's yard work. 
the, you say, we're in wintertime, when it's going to be sunny for the next few weeks, and that grass grows, and, and patches, and whatnot, and, and, and weed eater, and, and some, some flowers, maybe you say, you know what, Pastor, I'm just going to take that, that flower bed arrangement right there, run some things by, uh, ask what you want, but that, consider that mine, I'll come pull the weeds out of it. You say, that's not a big deal. You know what that is? Here's what it is. The whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part. That's what that is. Yeah. That's scriptural. That's biblical. Uh, you do some maintenance work around here. If something needs fixed, go, count me in. If I can do it, I'm going to help. How about this? You say, I, I can't do something like that physically, but how about writing letters? You know what's good to do? Even in this day and age, this digital age we live in, it's nice to get a handwritten letter. Maybe someone as a representation of the church saying, hey, we missed you this week. We thought about you. Or they were here this week, we're praying for you. We know you're going through something difficult. Just want to let you know as a church, we're praying. Making phone calls. How about this? Something real simple. How about you've got a kids program, harvest kids program. we got prizes over there. Uh, we want to give out. Let me take care of bringing in some prizes. I know the kids would appreciate that. <laughs> Maybe just being a greeter. I'm, I'm going to greet people, Pastor. I'm going to, uh, especially our guests, I'm going to greet them. Just going to see if they need anything, sit with them, whatever the case may be. Help count. I'm just going through. These are just things off the top of my head. Just here, this, that. And, and, and again, I say this because some of you are already doing that. It's wonderful. But be careful. That we don't get up to a point in our Christian life that we reach the plateau where we come to church and we sit and we hear and we worship and we leave. And that's our every week thing. Hold on. We're part of something that's incredible. So let's join in the work. Here's what I like it to. Determine to be a participator and not a spectator. What's the difference? A spectator watches what's going on. A participator is involved in the action. Anybody, if you ever played sports uh, and you were ever on a team, it wasn't much fun to sit on the bench during a game. You didn't like to spectate. You wanted to participate. In church, don't sit back. Join in. You say, why? What's the big deal, Pastor? Understand the difference it makes. You know, for you individually, we're not growing in Christ. The whole reason he gives us spiritual gifts, watch this, is not for our own benefit. It's to grow in him and using his church. And it's for not only are we making a difference individually for yourself and growing in Christ, but we're making a difference for the church. When one part of the body, watch this, when a part of the body is not doing its job, it doesn't matter how small or insignificant it seems. The whole body uh, is, is hurting because of it. So let's do our part individually because we need it to grow in Christ. But corporately, as a group, to be complete. And here's the fact of the matter. God has work for you to do that no one else is as well qualified or gifted to perform it. It's amazing. Uh, I, I can't do some quite a few things that you can. The same is true for this and this and that. But you know what God says? I've, I've constructed it. I've built it. I have authored it. I have ordained it. Hell's not going to prevail against it. I've given it a task to complete. Ooh, we got something great going on that we get to be a part of. Be part of the team. Next week, again, we'll look specifically at spiritual gifts that God gives. The whole purpose he gives them is for use in his church. But tonight, just determine, I want to join in the work. I want to join in the work. As we move forward, we're going to look at uh, being a part of a church and, and becoming a church member and what that means. But right now, just as a Christian, I want us to understand what a privilege to be part of his church. And we get to have a part in it. Not only that, we get to play a significant role in it.
Help us individually and to help us corporately. Let's bow our heads together and pray this evening. Thank you so much for listening.